Brittany from Nature Connections and today we have a very special video for you. After many, many requests, we have finally put together a video on how to make origami paper pots for starting your seedlings. We love origami paper pots because they're biodegradable and you can make them with just about any paper you have lying around the house. They're particularly great for seedlings who don't like having their roots disturbed when they're transplanted out into the garden like squash. A lot of people like to use newspaper for these particular origami pots and that is totally okay. Uh, we for this video chose to use our old class handouts and planning sheets from our skills of the wild classes with kids um, because we had a lot of them. This is a really great activity to do when you're just hanging around the living room or watching TV and it's an even better activity to do with your kids. It really helps with fine motor skills, keeps them busy for hours. There's something really satisfying after doing pot after pot after pot. It is addictive. You'll see See what I mean. So I would recommend watching the video a couple times. The first time, just watch how it's done. It, it's super simple and it won't be so confusing while you're trying to, you know, fold and then lose what's happening and go back and forth in the video. Just watch through the first time. And then the second time, YouTube has this really cool feature. If you find that the instructions are going a little bit too fast for you, you can go into the corner and press those three little dots and adjust the playback speed to whatever you're comfortable with. So, all right, so let's get started. So first, you're going to get yourself a pile of paper. For this first pot, we're going to use two sheets of 8.5 by 11, 100% recycled paper. Line your sheets up together, and then fold them in half like this, so that the rectangle you get is thick and chunky, not long and thin. Take your finger and press the seam. Next, you're going to turn your rectangle sideways and fold in half again giving you another thick and chunky rectangle, but smaller. Press the edges down to form a crease to serve as a guide, and then open up the last fold you did, making sure to have the folded seam closest to you. Now you're going to insert your finger into the pocket and fold the middle seam back towards the back, lining it up with the inner seam. Make sure to line these two seams up as straight as you can or your pot's going to turn out all wonky later. Once you've lined them up, hold the seams in place with one hand and let the other hand fold down the edges of your upside down party hat before closing your party hat in on itself, like so. Next, you're going to do the same thing with the other side, opening the other pocket by inserting your finger all the way down to the inner corner, lining up the two center seams, and using both hands to crease the edges of this party hat before again closing it over on itself. Now, with the pointy part facing you, take the top right edge, not both, and fold it in towards the middle, lining it up with the center crease and press the edge into place. Now you're going to do the same thing with the left side, leaving the mirrored left side behind it in place. Make sure your pot looks like this so far, and if it doesn't, then unfold it and watch the first part again. Now we're going to repeat the last two steps, bringing the outside edges in to meet the center seam. This step allows us to have a deep seedling pot rather than a shallow one, which encourages deep root growth. Again, press all your edges. And there you have it. One side of your pot is now finished. Take a look, and now let's turn it over and repeat all the same steps to complete the other side. So once again, we're going to start by taking the outer edges and matching them with the center crease as straight as possible before pressing them in place. Don't forget to do this one more time or you'll have yourself an origami platter instead of a pot. The second folding is what allows your pot to be deep, not flat. Let's just fold that last edge there, press it into place, 
And there you go. It's as simple as that. Only a few more folds to go. So when you're first making these pots, folding the bottom diamond into a triangle to create guidelines can be helpful. This part isn't really necessary, it just makes opening your pot in the last step a little bit easier. Another optional fold that can help is taking what we call the wings on the top and folding them over the sides of the pot. This fold helps keep the pot together when you go to open it. Holding the wings, or the flaps down on the sides, take your fingers and gently pull the opening of your pot apart. If it does not open like you see here, and is instead connected on the inside, it means you forgot to close your party hats over themselves before matching the right and left edges with the center seams. And if it does open like this, keep holding the wings down and using your fingers to push out the edges of the pot from the inside. Last but not least, it's time to fold your wings onto the inside of your pot. We find this helps keep your pot shape, and by holding them down when you fill it, they will get trapped in place by the pressure of your soil. And that's all there is to it. Of course, once you have the basics, you can customize this to your needs. Now we're going to quickly repeat only the first couple of steps to show you one simple change you can make to create an even smaller, even thicker pot. Again, we will only be using two sheets of paper. So once again, we'll fold our pages over in half, pressing the seam. And then in half again, aiming for thick and chunky, not long and thin. But this time, instead of stopping there and moving on, we're going to do that same fold again for a third time. Now I won't explain the rest of the steps from this point, because the rest of the steps are exactly the same. The only difference between these two pots is that the first pot started with two rectangular folds, and the second smaller pot started with three. Just this one extra fold creates a pot only a quarter of the size of our original pot and it doubles the thickness of the walls. So as you can see here, the first pot we made with two pages and two starting folds has walls that are only two pages thick. Whereas the second smaller pot started with the same first two pages but included an additional third starting fold resulting in side walls that are four pages thick. You can play around with this by adding more pages or adding more starting folds depending on the size and thickness you're going for. So what about newspaper? Really, any paper will work. A general rule to go by is you want to avoid using shiny or glossy paper and try to use paper with the least amount of colored ink. And in a pinch, honestly, any paper will do. When these are ready to pot, you'll start seeing little uh, roots, little white roots starting to come through the paper. You don't have to take the paper off. The roots know what to do. So actually, all you have to do is dig a hole in your garden, put the whole pot in, and that's it. However, of course, being biodegradable, um, that process may start before you even get it in the ground. So just so you're aware, there may be a little bit of uh, white mold that will start happening around here. Now this happens for a couple of reasons. If it's not bright enough, and if there's not enough sun where you've placed your seedling pots, then uh, you may get a little bit of that white mold. The other reason is there may not be enough airflow around your seedlings as well. And so a couple of days ago, we noticed under our lights indoors that the white mold was starting to, to come around again. And so we decided to bring the squash outside into the greenhouse where there's a little bit more air circulation and definitely a lot more sunlight. The white mold is already starting to go away. That said, we've never really had any problem with the white mold or any decomposition of these paper pots before the seedlings were gone out. Uh, in general, whatever is attacking the dead plant material that is the paper is not really going to be attacking the live cells of the living plant. So let's grab a couple pieces of paper and let's get folded.